happy birthday! Ah! <laughs> oh, uh, here come the fudge. Oh, thanks a lot. Do you like fudge? Oh, yeah, I love it. Then you'll love this. It'll remind you of it. <laughs> You're right. It's really close. I make fudge harder than most people. You make it harder than most rocks. Where is Don taking you tonight on your, uh, uh, which birthday? Present. My present birthday. Well, hopefully we're going to go see Among the Living. A friend in Donald's office is trying to get us some tickets. <laughs> Among the Living? Impossible. Nobody can get tickets to that. That's my Donald. Nobody. Here we are, Don. Two for tonight. Murray, you're fantastic. You did it. So did you. Oh, uh, sorry. How did you get him? Pull. I reached in my pocket. I pulled out 30 bucks. Anne's worth every penny of it. Don, Anne is worth diamonds, yachts, minks, but not $30 cash. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, right. Uh, sorry, Murray. Yeah. Oh, will you get that, Janie? Hello, Anne Marie's resident. <laughs> oh, hi, Don. It's Janie. How are you? It's for me. <laughs> Donald, did you get them? I'm sorry, sweetheart. I did everything I could. I tried everywhere. Murray just couldn't get them. Oh. Oh, well, that's okay. Listen, we'll try for another night. Oh, sure. Sure, another night. I'll come over around 7.30 and pick you up and we'll go out to dinner, okay? Okay. Okay, honey. Bye-bye. <laughs> Don, are you crazy? What are you trying to do to that girl? disappointed, but I'm not really mad. Yeah. Frankly, I'd be thrilled just to know I'd almost gone out in the middle of the week. Yeah, I know. You don't get out much. Much, Anne. You don't know what it's like being the mother of a one-year-old child. You start looking forward to taking out the garbage just so you'll have ten seconds of peace and quiet. But you keep talking about having more children. Sure, I keep praying one of them will be a maid. <laughs> when was the last time you had dinner out? When I was in the maternity ward. Can you get someone to take care of the baby? My baby? <laughs> Listen, there are only two people in the world I'd let take care of that baby. My Aunt Helen and maybe Dr. Spock. <laughs> Where does your Aunt Helen live? By the phone, praying someday I'll phone her and ask her to watch the baby. Perfect. Here, call up Harry and tell him that you and he are having dinner with us tonight. Impossible. You think I'm crazy. It's the middle of the week. It's my birthday. Tell him I want to have a party. Dial. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Downs, please. Mrs. Downs. Listen, you know, he's gonna think I'm crazy. Oh, hello, Harry. <laughs> no, no. Listen, everything's fine. The baby's fine. Yes. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll tell you why I called. <laughs> How would you like to take me out to dinner tonight with Don and Ann to celebrate Ann's birthday? Because she doesn't want to be alone, and it was her idea to phone and not mine, and if you don't want to, you're perfectly right. <laughs> what? Darling! Oh, no, no, don't worry about a thing. Listen, I'm going to call Aunt Helen, and she'll mind the baby. Everything will be fine. Oh, goodbye, sweetheart. Oh, honey. <laughs> he is such a doll! <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, you're such a doll. <laughs> oh, I'm going out in the middle of the week. Great, right. and Helen, and Helen. Helen, and Helen. Oh, would you mind? Of course not. Listen, help yourself. I wouldn't let a dime stand between you and Shangri-La. I'm going out in the middle of the week. <laughs> oh, and Helen? Janie, here's your chance. Tonight you can stay with the baby. Harriet... Oh, okay. Goodbye. What's Dr. Spock's phone number? What's the matter? She has the flu. Oh, how awful. No, oh, it's not so terrible. I, I was sort of looking forward to spending the evening at home tonight. I found a new way to fold a diaper. I thought I'd try it out. Janie, you and Harry are going out for dinner tonight. I'll take care of the baby. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you, sweetheart. Okay, are you ready? <gasps> A surprise? Yeah, now shut your eyes. Open them, open them. Okay, open them. <gasps> oh, Donald, you got the tickets. <laughs> oh, I'm so proud of you. Everybody said nobody could get them, and you did, and you did it for me, and I love you, and I can't go. Can't go? You're putting me on. You're not putting me on. What, what do you mean you can't go? Well, I've got a little surprise for you. Surprise! Uh, what's he or, or she doing here? Isn't that Bobby Downs? Of course it is. What are you doing with him? I'm taking care of him. Well, I'm here to relieve him. You're going to take care of me now. Now, go ahead. You can take him back. We got to go. Oh, Donald, I can't take him back. What are you talking about? Well, Janie finally got Harry to take her out to dinner, so I said I'd take care of the baby until they got back, and then we'd go out. Oh, Donald, isn't he getting darling? Y yes, honey, he, he's, he's just darling. I mean, he really has a person's face yeah, now. A, a person's face. And it's your birthday. I mean, in all the birthday books, it says the birthday person gets to go out and have goodness done to her. It doesn't say that she stays home and does goodness for somebody else. Oh, Donald, when they get back, we're going out. Honey, do you know what I went through to get these tickets? I mean, forget the $30. Oh, thirty dollars! Yeah, honey, I wanted everything to be perfect for your birthday. Oh, Donald, I'm sorry. That's what I get for planning a surprise. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna call a friend that has kids. They can give us the number of a babysitter, and oh, then we... Oh, Donald, I can't do that. Until Janie and Harry get home, this baby is my responsibility. Honey, maybe we can find somebody responsible and... Donald, I can't do that. She doesn't trust anybody with the baby. She trusted me. Now, I can't leave him with somebody else. Excuse me, honey. All right, all right, honey. L l let me think this out. Let me think this out. You like that? Oh, I got it. I got it. We'll take the baby with us. Oh, you're kidding. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. We'll leave it in the cloakroom. They're very responsible. Did you ever read those checks? Not responsible for hats or umbrellas. They don't say anything about babies. <laughs> Look, uh, all right. You've got to go, and I'll stay here and take care of the baby. Now, Donald, now that's ridiculous. I wouldn't enjoy myself if you weren't with me. Well, honey, it's a crime to waste these tickets. Now, look, I'd be much happier with your seeing the play. But, Donald, I don't want to go alone. It's my birthday. Well, well, we'll celebrate it. As soon as Janie and Harry get back, I'll come down to the theater, and we'll go out dancing. And then you can tell me the whole show word for word. Oh, Donald, I don't want to do that. Now, put the baby on my bed. Go on. Come on. Now, I want to stay home with you. It's my birthday, and I want to spend my birthday with the man I love. I didn't know you felt so strongly about the kid. Well, I do. Now, go on. Put him on the bed, and put all the pillows around him so he doesn't fall off, and I'll fix our dinner. Okay. Here you go. That's a boy. That's a boy. Yeah. That's a boy. That's a boy. Okay. Okay. I'm right here. Right Here's the tickets. We're not going to use them. <laughs> okay. Here you go. Okay. Oh, Don, I want him to have those. They're dirty. Oh. Are you sure he'll be safe enough? Well, he looks like an active kid. He must be strong and tough and athletic. Oh, Donald, he's safe. Now, come on. Let's let him sleep. Right? Honey, does he look a little pink to you? No. Donald, all babies are pink. Oh, I thought girls were supposed to be pink and boys were blue. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Now, what would you like for dinner? Pot roast or hunger? Pot roast sounds great. I've had hunger today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
right, sweetheart. Now go to sleep. That's a good boy. <laughs> Shh. Now, nighty night. Nighty night. Oh, Donald, he is a little warm. I think you're right. He does look a little pink, too. Maybe he's got a little fever. Uh, have you found anything yet? Not yet. Where did you get this book? At the supermarket. It was only a dollar. Isn't it terrific? It's better than a first aid book. It has every disease known to mankind in it. By the time I find out what the baby's got, he won't have it anymore. Don't let me look. You get on the phone and try and get rid of the tickets. Okay. It's just about a half an hour before the show starts. Let's see, Ruthie and Jerry are away. Stan and Louise, they live near here. What's the medical term for dribbling? Drooling. Mm, no. Yeah, drooling. Well, why wouldn't they stick with dribbling? That's no big improvement, dribbling to drool. There's no answer. Who else lives near here? The measles. What's their number? <laughs> They don't have a number. They're a disease. Oh, the measles. What's it say about the measles? I don't know. I haven't found it yet. Murray. Murray. Murray lives near here. No, I don't think it's the measles. Chicken pox. Hello, Murray? Don. <laughs> no, we didn't go. My little surprise backfired and we're staying home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Listen, you want the tickets? Good. Uh, Murray, you don't have to thank me. Uh, uh, Murray, Murray, why are you thanking me? I don't think you understand. I'm not giving you the tickets. I'm selling them to you. You're right. What do you mean, how much do they cost? You know how much they cost. You got them for me. They're $15 a ticket. Right. Look, I know they're only $6 tickets, but you had to pay $15 a piece to get them for me. That right? $15 a ticket. That's it. Mar Murray, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'd rather throw them away before I'd sell them to anybody for less than $14 a ticket. Right. $14 a ticket. I mean, that's it. It's, it's the principle. Now, Murray, Murray, now wait a minute. I'd give them to a perfect stranger before I'd settle for anything less than uh, $13 a ticket. And 12. 12 to a friend. Okay. What? All right, all right. It's, it's the last minute. You, well... All right, but they're certainly worth $10, even on such short notice. All right, $10 a ticket, right? $10. All right, now, listen, I'll leave them in Ann's mailbox downstairs. You pick them up, and then you can pay me in the morning, okay? T All right, right. Thanks, Murray. Bye-bye. You think I was too tough on him? Oh, I don't know. I think if he'd held out a little longer, he might have even paid six for them. <laughs> Oh, here it is, Donald. Wait a second. Here it is. The mumps. It could be the mumps. Now, honey, <gasps> listen. Why didn't you call Janie at the restaurant? Maybe it's something she knows about. Oh, Donald, she'd have mentioned it if it was something she knew about. There was some restaurant I don't even know. She couldn't even remember the name of it. It's some restaurant in New Jersey. She said when she got there, she'd give me the number. Oh, Donald, it's the mumps. I know it's the mumps. Honey, all right, all right. Now, now calm down. What pediatrician do they use? Do you know? Yeah, sure I know. It's, uh, it's, uh, oh, gosh, it's a name she's mentioned a million times. It's, uh... Goodwill. Dr. Goodwill. Wrong. How do you know it's wrong? Because I know your memory. And Goodwill is too pat a name for a doctor. When you heard it, it may have sounded like Goodwill, but it really isn't Goodwill. Yeah, you're right. The good is good, the will is bad. It's Dr. Uh, Dr. Good something. Dr. Good, Dr. Good... Way. Dr. Good... Good way. Right, Dr. Goodwin, that's it. Dr. Goodwin. Uh, honey, 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 now look. Please, I want you to calm down. Before you call, I want you to calm down. In the first place, it may be nothing but a cold. And in the second place, even if it is the mumps, every kid gets the mumps and it's not so terrible. It's terrible when adults get them because it's very painful and it hurts and it's very bad. I know all that, Donald. So then relax. How can I? I never had the mumps. Yet. <laughs> call the doctor. <laughs> Shh, Donald, listen. What? Did you hear that? The baby isn't crying. I heard the baby not crying. Maybe it's not the mumps. It probably isn't. Donald, you can't say it probably isn't. Well, no. I mean, maybe isn't a probably. R right. Maybe it isn't. And maybe it is. 
Well, if maybe it isn't, then I guess maybe it is. You see, maybe is one of those words that has an isn't for every is. Why doesn't the doctor call back? He will, honey. His service said he'd call within an hour. Oh, I hope the baby's all right. Leave it to me. I get the baby one night and he gets the mumps. Well, you're just careless, that's all. <laughs> Oh, Donald, do you realize how much I've got to do next week? I've got two interviews and three auditions. Honey, honey, look. If it is the mumps, it's going to be at least two weeks before it shows up on you. I mean, if the baby has it now, there's at least a two-week incubation period before you'll get it. Two weeks? That's not enough time. For what? For them to invent something to keep me from getting them. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Oh, Donald, I feel so dumb. I've ruined everything. Your whole night and surprise and everything. Come here. Oh, Donald, Donald don't touch me. I'll mump you. I've been mumped. Now, now, listen. I'm the one that should be walking around here hitting his head against the wall for being so stupid. Yeah, well, don't do it. You'll wake the baby. If I hadn't been so smart about my nifty surprise, we would have been at the theater tonight, and you wouldn't be home taking care of a baby and worrying about getting the mumps on your birthday. Oh, Donald, don't feel bad. I won't. And you know why? Because I'm going to get tickets to that show for another night. I mean, you and I can go out any other night together. And it's much more special to remember this birthday as the night we waited for a pediatrician rather than go to a play. Now, if you promise not to feel bad about ruining my night, I promise not to feel bad about ruining yours. Stone, that's what you are. Solid stone. Okay, Ann. Now, look. You look through this book and check all the baby's symptoms until the doctor calls, and I'll go take a look at the baby. Okay. Okay. Uh... He seems fine. His nose is still a little runny, though. You know, Donald, this is really an interesting book. There's a whole chapter on child psychology. Oh, yeah? Donald. Suppose you had a three-year-old son who purposely broke your eyeglasses. What would you do? I'd have him imprisoned. Really? Would you hit him? Well, that depends. You mean you might hit him? I might. So, you believe under certain circumstances it's all right for a father to hit his son? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, well, like what circumstances? Well, I don't know, honey. Well, come on, Donald. Just tell me, uh, for instance, like, like, when would you think it'd be all right for you to hit your son? It depends. No depends. Tell me one surefire time that you would hit your three-year-old son. When he bombed England. Donald. Oh, honey, I have no way of knowing. The point being, you would hit your child. Under certain circumstances, yes. How could you? Well, that's the way I am. I'd also probably slap a snake if it was going to bite me. Donald, don't treat this so unimportantly. I happen to think that it's wrong under any circumstances to strike a child. Okay, okay, honey. What does it say in the book about hitting? Get you some more wine. Hello? Oh, yes, Dr. Goodwin. Yes, this is Anne Marie. I'm taking care of the Downs baby, and I think he's sick, and I've never been a mother, and I was wondering if you'd come over. Oh, well, I live right down the hall from the Downs. Ziz. Well, oh, he's sleeping now. Uh, but I was just thinking if you could come over. Uh, whatever it costs, I don't care. But please come. Oh, yes, Doctor. It's 4D. Oh, thank you, Doctor. That's terrific. Bye. Is he coming over? Yes, he is. Oh, Donald, I am really bad. I really am bad, Donald. I never realized until tonight just how bad I really am. I'm just as worried about myself getting the mumps as I am about the baby. What's so bad about that, Anne? The mumps certainly are as bad for you as they are for the baby. Women aren't supposed to be concerned with themselves, Donald. Where's my maternal instinct? <laughs> uh, Anne, in the first place, Bobby Downs isn't even your son. All women are all mother's sons, Donald. I don't believe that. Oh, sure, it's easy for you. You go around hitting three-year-olds. <laughs> all right, honey. You're getting a little wacky. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We'll play some cards. Get your mind off it till the doctor comes out. Go get the cards. Go ahead. Get the cards. That a girl. Hello. Oh, hi, Janie. Oh, everything's fine. It's, it's just great. Yeah, are you having a good time? Oh, good. Listen, uh, just in case anything should, you know, come up, where do I reach you? Oh, yeah, the fireside. Right. Oh, yeah, no, no, I, I can get the number. Okay, well, have a real good time. Bye. You didn't want to ruin their evening. Oh, Donald, she gets out so seldom, and the doctor's on its way. I mean, if it's anything, I can always call her. You're right, I agree with you, and that's one of the nice things about you. Come on, here. 
Donald, if I do get the mumps, I don't want you to think you have to come over here all the time and stay with me and eat with me and everything. I won't. I feel it'll be a great opportunity for me to go out to dinners and shows in a tuxedo with a hat and a cane. No, I really mean it, Donald. I wouldn't want to be a burden. Oh, honey, come on. Pick up your cards. What are we playing? Cribbage. I don't know how to play cribbage. I know that. It's a dollar a hand. Let's go. Donald. <laughs> oh, okay, you got five cards in your hand. Now we're going to play poker. Poker? I've always wanted to play poker with you. You've never wanted to play with me. I know, but tonight's your birthday. Do you want any cards? Yeah, and let's deal again. <laughs> Honey, you can take three, but you can't ask to deal them again just because they're bad. Why not? Because I'm wrong and we'll deal them again. <laughs> oh, Doctor, is it the mumps? It is not the mumps. Oh. Or anything else. Oh, thank goodness. There's nothing whatsoever wrong with that child. Oh, that's wonderful. I'll send a bill to the Don. Oh, no, that's all right. I'll pay for it, Doctor. And? Well, Donald, there's nothing wrong with him. I'm sure they'd rather pay to find out I was healthy than to find out I was sick. I'm sure they know he's healthy. I'm the one who thought he was sick. How much is it, Doctor? Ten dollars. Ten dollars? Yeah, here you go, Doctor. Oh, Doctor, you don't have to do that. Consider it part of your birthday night. It would have cost me at least that much to take you out to dinner. Then add on a 15% tip. <laughs> Good night. Oh, by the way, Miss Marie, there are mumped shots now. Get it. Yes. You know, Doctor, I was uh, just kind of wondering about something. Yes, what is it? Well, um, I have this nephew, and um, he took his father's eyeglasses, and he threw them on the ground, and he broke them purposely. And um, he's about three years old. I don't care how old he is. He should be spanked. <laughs> Excuse me, go on. And uh, then he fell asleep. It's a very dull story. Well, thanks a lot for coming over, Doctor. You're very welcome. Good night. Night. Just because he said he'd spank the child doesn't make it right. I know that, and everyone is entitled to their own opinions in these things. I guess you're right. Oh, Donald, I'm so sleepy. Between worrying about the baby and that wine, I'm just exhausted. It was some birthday you had. The best thing that happened to you is you found out you didn't have the mumps. <laughs> you just tell me how wonderful I am, and it'll be a perfect birthday. How wonderful you are. And why you love me. And why I love you. By Donald Hollinger. I love you because you're beautiful and witty and logical. Shh. Huh? Shh, Donald, just... Just let me sleep about five minutes. That's really all I need. Just take a little nap and I'll feel real good when I wake up. Honey, if you fall asleep now, you're gonna be out for the rest of the night. Anne. Anne. Happy birthday, darling. No, you're not sleeping on the baby. Janie came back and took him home, and you slept through it all. I put you to bed and stood at the foot of it and stared at you and realized that everything that I loved in the whole world was in between those toes that wiggle when you sleep and those bangs up at your forehead that, for some strange reason, don't ever get messed up, no matter how many times you turn over. You've asked me many times why I love you. <laughs> When I can explain why I feel like I swallowed a feather when someone mentions your name. When I can explain why I can miss an entire inning of a Mets baseball game because I've been staring at your picture on my television set. And when I can explain why I stand in your bedroom watching you sleep, then I'll be able to explain why I love you. Meanwhile, just take my word for it, or I'll tell everybody your toes wiggle while you sleep. Good night, my love. Donald, Donald, I don't know how to tell you this, but someone last night put me to bed and then left me a beautiful unsigned note. <laughs> <laughs>